Fjorda is here. And with the latest map to join the official roster comes new regions and areas to navigate and survive in with a monumental list of creatures to tame. But which one is the most important to nab specifically for Fjorda? you right, kids, it's Ras Clark, and welcome to another top 10 as voted by you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So, in at number 10 is the Otter. Surprisingly lower than expected, considering a major offering with the map. Temperature. Fjorda is undisputed for being the coldest offering around, with ice cube nights even on the beach, and a whole realm reaching temperatures below even the murder snow, forcing you to spend many points in fortitude. But the otter is the undisputed solution for all occasions. Passively tamed with dead fish, whilst it offers some great additional abilities such as pearl gathering, egg hatching, and artifact holding, its biggest need is its hypothermic insulation, offering between 75 to 82 hypothermic insulation and between 34 and 38 hypothermic insulation per 100% melee damage, which, yes, increases when further leveled in melee, and once throwing on your shoulder will make those cold environments a breeze. In at number 9 is the Snow Owl. Overlooking it simply being a great flyer for the map to get about on, when imprinted being a great option especially along with it being an alternative poop dispenser for both your fertilizer needs and gacha crystal buffing as well as its healing ability a great alternative option to raising a wyvern without milk is by far for this map its predator vision tamed with a conventional knockout and offering our variants on the map too finding some creatures in the dense environments especially at night can be a real challenge but slap on that infrared and you've got a great hunting companion to find some otherwise disguised friends. Here in at number 8 is the Denonicus. Voted one of the best overall travel mounts in previous votes, Fjorda graces you with plenty of nests dotted about the plains, allowing you to raise a fantastic choice when out and about right off the bat and will want to keep breeding as you head into late game. Along with its charge jump into a sort of glide with no fall damage, a climb ability and pack buff screech, it comes into its own being able to latch onto larger creatures and hitting them with a mean bleed damage multiplier, stacking with each hit and more so with a pack, meaning low tiered alphas become a breeze and when bred and saddled well can be a great solution to taking down the mighty alpha dragon. And don't forget, their eggs are a great solution to the best kibble in the game, which can tame any creature requiring kibble. In at number 7 is the Dodo. The result of community votes, once again we see the Dodo, as useful as it sounds and as beautiful to behold. Be the pillar of the Ark community by taming the iconic flagship creature. Or accept this for the vote that it is, and let's move on. In at number 6 is the Andrew Sarkus. One of the new creatures offered with the map, the beast is by far one of the easiest tames around, owed to a simple requirement of honey, found via harvestable rocks on the map, lured and initiated into a mini-game similar to an Equus, whilst watching that rage meter. Once tamed, we'll find you in the hands of an impressively fast creature. Outrunning most on the map, a respectable bite, slow effect kickback and buoyancy underwater with no oxygen loss to cross sea quickly. It comes into its own when popping on a saddle. Requiring advanced rifle bullets, you've now got a 360 degree rotational gun which you can shoot from either stationary or on the move, drifting into pose for an epic showdown. Furthermore, it's one of the only tames of its size to not be dismounted from by either a Pelovia or Karkinos, and being immune to poison attacks, and most of all, radiation, protecting you without hazard gear when saddled, making them a great alternative solution to those dangerous rock drake nest runs. In at number five is the Maywing. An absolute favourite of mine when it comes to mobility, the milk 
Teated Glider is arguably the fastest travel mount in the game, found only in the Redwoods and easily knocked out, especially if Netgund provides you with the means to get about anywhere as quick as you can. On top of its ability to hold up to any four sized baby creatures to keep until adult, a huge space saver, acting as a trough in the process and producing any kibble type of egg it decides, giving you access to every kibble, a decent enough knockback attack berry harvester of which it has a 50% weight reduction with, as well as meat, which you're probably only level with it having great stamina right off the bat, and it's a fantastic choice for entering the sea with no oxygen, the Glide, when mastered, can see you reach insane speeds, so much so you will struggle to use any other travel game once tamed. In at number 4 is the Fjordhawk. Perhaps one of the most challenging to tame on the list, needing to be fed carcasses that you need to kill on foot in range of, with large creatures being an alternative, but Ovis being the recommended method to date, once nabbed you've got a foolproof get out of jail free card. Whilst shoulder mounted when reaching a certain doom will take your gear and fly to where you respawn with as much as it can carry, meaning some great new solutions such as egg running without too much concern and grabbing as many eggs as you can before dying, but loot transferring from beds, meaning once set up you can create grind spots all over the map, simply drop your loot on a weight boosted Fjordhawk and travel back to base with everything it can hold. As well of course as seeking out dead items if needing that distance, this is by far a great solution to grinding and getting out of sticky situations in both PvP and PvE. In at number 3 is the Rock Drake. Hard to shake, always voted highly whenever listed, and especially so with Fjorda, as they do indeed exist on this map and can indeed be egg stolen from their nesting ground in Asgard, a first for an arc map since Aberration. And even more, it's easier. Still requiring hazard gear to survive the zone, it's by far an easier steal than the aforementioned. And even better, Nameless Venom is offered in the form of harvestable rocks within another aberration cave on the mainland, making these now incredibly easy tames to raise. And once owned, boasts a fantastic travel mount. Able to glide, boost to walks from distance, climbing anything it chooses, bark a mean bite comparable to most of the heavy hitters, a great choice for weight carrying, zipping underwater if needed, and of course its cloak ability, rendering you invisible to and unnoticeable by anything else whilst the stamina remains. Along with a late game tech saddle if you can reach it, this is by far one of the best all around creatures and you've now got them for free. In at number 2 is the Shadow Main. Speaking of all around, it seems there's just a smidge better and coincidentally being a stone's throw away from the drakes. The Lionfish Lion, another surprise addition to the map, is perhaps the most feared and therefore deserving to travel around on. Tamed with fish in fish baskets and needing some weighty fish to tame one efficiently, passively, without disturbing one, tracking and waiting for it to sleep again, which by the way must be done in the daytime, once tamed boasts an incredible blend of movement, launching into boosted air scaling leaps, either from land or water, of which the latter it moves incredibly quick in, with a natural armoured saddle meaning no level requirement to ride, a mean bite that can be charged into a heavy attack, an AoE teleport damage attack, stunning anything it hits in the combo, reflective thorn damage at anything that hits it, a cloak ability to sneak up to prey, and buff attacks depending on your gender, if mate boosted providing either an AoE stealth cloak to all allied creatures, or a courage roar of stamina, torpidity, speed and thorn male damage, as well as a chance at boost the pack leader or oh, some up to be an absolute arsenal of a creature and an almost winning one but not quite the winning one and before we get to that let's just have a quick special mention to the creatures that didn't just make the cut
And here it is in a number one, the Desmodus Dracula. Beating every creature by a mile, the new reigning champion for everyone's taming list is a worthy entry due to a very special trick up its wing. An initial difficult tame requiring blood packs in your inventory and like a bloodstalker requires you to be picked up and drained from. Throwing in high health tamed creatures it can pick up to boost its efficiency. But once tamed offers you a blood pack making machine harvested from any corpse and with blood drain switched on will farm those precious packs in the bucket load. So tame a low level starting out for a quicker farm for those higher levels. Along with an echolocation ability hitting victims for 20% more at night, night vision to see targets in dark places, an insane spoil meat harvester offering a downwards only glide speed, complete maneuverability in the air like a tappy and being able to shoot from, it excels in two offerings especially. The first being Sanguine Elixir. For every 200 blood packs farmed within its inventory allows you to craft an Elixir, which when drank near a mid-tame or a mid-raise will boost its taming or imprinting by 30%. Only allowed to be performed once, but for lower rate servers will be a godsend for all players. And see you wanting to farm as many Elixirs as possible. Just be mindful to only craft when needed as they do spoil and can't be refrigerated. But its biggest use and especially so for Fjorda is its ability to fly in caves. It is the only flyer you can take into caves and the only flyer you can use in the three realms on the map. And when combining its stealth invisibility mode for the former makes those artifact and loot cave runs an absolute ease to breeze. You won't do another artifact cave without one. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed this list. If you did comment below, let me know what more top 10s do you want to see voted for in the future? My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, uh, peace out. So.